Let's take a look at working with video in Studio One. And before we get started, I just would like to mention that there is some sort of bug in Studio One or a limitation with audio routing in Windows that causes a bit of an issue. And I'm sure that's gonna come up while we're going through this tutorial. But most of us who are writing to film or video are gonna be using a separate audio interface. So this shouldn't cause a problem, but I did wanna bring that up. And as I said, I'm sure we'll see that as we're working in this tutorial. So up at the top here, we have a film strip icon and we can use this to open up the video player. And we'll first just take a look at a few different ways and the options of importing our video. So once this is open, we can click on the plus symbol and then navigate to our folder where we have the video we'd like to load in the Explorer or the Finder on the Mac. We can then just click and choose open. We can see here the different formats that are supported there. So we have um, MPEG, AVI, MOV, MP4, 3GP, MV4, MKV, and WMV. But I'm gonna cancel out of here and let's close out the video player. We can also come directly to the Explore window and click, hold, and drag and drop that into our Arrange view and that will be loaded. We can also come to the Files tab of our browser and navigate to the location. I'll come to the video folder here and then I can drag and drop that onto the Arrange view and our video has been loaded. If we'd like to remove the video at any time, we could just click on the minus button here and then that will be taken out and let's close out our video player. Now we do have a couple of different options when we are importing our video. So here I have a music video, one of my old ones. If I were to click, hold and drag and press control, notice that that changes from import video to extract audio to new track. So in this way, Studio One will extract. Let me shift E to make this a bit larger. Let's pull that over to the front. So Studio One is going to extract the audio from that video file and the video will not be loaded. So if you're just only interested in pulling audio from a video file, then you have that option as well. And you're, that's done by holding control. Let's delete this file out and shift T to remove that track. Just to show that the other option is we can click, hold and drag. And if I press alt, notice that the import video changes to import video and extract audio to new track. So in this way, we're importing both the video and extracting the audio to a separate track within our song. So then when I play back, we have our separate audio track in the video, which is muted. And this is part of where the issue comes in, at least on Windows. I'm sure this is not an issue with a separate audio interface, if that's what you're using. But sometimes when we're importing video or using these different options, you notice when I played back, there was no audio. So if I right click on the speaker icon and open up the volume mixer, we can see that Studio One has been muted. So I did not do that. Now, if we come back to the beginning, let's go ahead and play this back. And now we have our audio and it's actually doubled. I would think that it would not, it would only be doubled if we were to take the mute audio off from our video player, because the video player is going to send out audio. And, but by default, this will be muted. So if this is muted, we should only hear the audio from our track up above, but it sounds doubled. And again, So there is some sort of issue when we click on this. If I come to the volume mixer, we can see that this is muted. And I think this is good that this comes up because I actually receive a lot of comments of people saying that they run into this problem and they've watched my troubleshooting audio in Windows video and that this resolved it. So uh, if someone at Personas is seeing this, I hope you guys can fix this or maybe it's just a Windows routing limitation with audio. Okay, I'm going to remove this video. Let's close our player and take this track out of there. And I'm going to bring in the other video that I have. And the next thing I'd like to mention is it might be useful for you to set the frame rate for your song. Um, 
And you could do that when you're creating the song, but we could also come to song up above and come to the song setup and then choose our frame rate here. And again, that could be useful to do to set that to the video that you're importing. So if I come back to the Explorer here and let's right click on that video collage and come to the properties and let's check out the details, we can see that the frame rate for this is 30 frames a second. So it'd probably be a good idea to come to your song setup and then make that adjustment here as well. I'll apply that, okay. And the other thing that I'd like to mention is I usually have bars and beats for the ruler up above, but if you're using the professional version and possibly an artist, I'm not sure, we do have the option to add a secondary ruler. So if you'd like to see your frames, we can right click on the ruler and then come to the open secondary ruler and choose frames. So now we have that additional ruler where we can see in frames. Now on the video player itself, we've seen that the plus button will take us to an explorer to load a video. The minus will remove. This will actually extract audio to a track. And we've seen that we can accomplish that also by holding alt if we want to do that just in the beginning. We then have a video offset. And this is going to allow you to adjust the timing of your video to match with what you're recording or the audio that you're working with. So if I click on this, then we have this video offset display where we can make adjustments. And so here, this field here is gonna adjust in milliseconds, this will be in seconds, this will be minutes, and this will be hours. So if we would like to offset our video, say by three seconds, then we could click in this field and I'm just gonna use my mouse wheel to move that up by three seconds, I'll click okay. So now when I play back, the video should not begin playback until three seconds. One, two, and now we start. So if you would like to move your video forward, then you would need to enter into the negative values. So let's come back to the beginning. And now you can see our playback here is starting all the way at the end of the video because this is a very short video. Let's come back to the offset. And we can even see as we adjust this, the video will update as well as the playback cursor in the video player to show you where you're at. Okay, next we have this wrench icon that will allow you to change the size of your video half size, the default, and double. We can also drag this over to a second monitor. If we have that, we can maximize with this up above and then restore. I'm gonna click the wrench icon and take this back to the default size. So now that your video is loaded, the whole point of this is so that you can write along with the video. So you could always just come to your instruments or set up your audio interface to record live instruments. I'm just gonna come to, I'm just gonna choose anything here. It's probably not gonna match the mood of the video, but I just wanna show you. We can come back to the beginning. I'll enter into record and let's press the space bar to stop. I'll press delete to remove that because again, this issue with the mixer has been muted. Let's record. Okay, let's close out the player, or we'll leave that open. The browser, come back to the beginning. Playback.
Okay, and so as you would with any other song, you just continue adding tracks and instruments, vocals, whatever you'd like to compose to, to your video. And one other thing that may be useful to you while you're working with, uh, let's remove that secondary ruler for the time being, would be the uh, marker track. So we can access that by clicking on the global track visibility button choosing marker. And with this, we can add different markers. So if we want to indicate certain scenes throughout our video, then we can easily do that. So wherever we position our cursor, then we could um, say there's a transition here. We could click on the plus button. That's going to add a marker. If I double click on that, we can then name that. I'll click OK. Let's come here. Okay, there's another transition right about here. So I'll click the plus button, double click. And let's just randomly place a couple more. So now we have easily identifiable markers up above here that we can use to navigate to different scenes or areas of our video and our song to get to those quickly. We can use Shift and B to return to the previous markers, and we can use Shift and N to move forward. And if I Shift B to the very beginning, we can also use numbers three through nine on the numeric keypad to access the scenes individually. So if I press three, then we are taken to the first one. If I press four, we go to the, to the next one, five, the next six and seven. So if I wanted to randomly jump to scene one, then I could press four and we're taken there. If I want to jump to scene three, I could press six on the numeric keypad to jump to these markers pretty quickly. If you'd like to remove a marker, just select it and you can press the minus key here or just press delete on your QWERTY keyboard. All right, now the final thing we'll take a look at is rendering. So to render your video along with your song that you've created, you can come to song and then here we have export video. So now at the very top, we can choose our location by clicking on the ellipsis. We can choose a different location. Um, we can rename our file. We can then choose a video format. The file types that we have are MPEG, MV4, and MPEG. Uh, we can choose the codec, but I've only seen H.264 available, no matter what you select for the file type. And then we have the audio codec, which will be on MP3 by default, but we can choose AAC or Dolby AC3. Now by default, our export range is going to be for the length of the video, but we could also choose between loop. So if we set up a loop here, a loop region, then we could choose to export by that between start and end marker. We can also choose to select certain portions between uh, selected markers. So you see, we saw that I added the markers. So if we wanted to come here, we can choose from the different markers in between that I've added. And then finally, we have some mix down options. By default, this is just going to be on your main output. Then you just click OK and your video will start to render. All right, so these are some of the tools that we have available in Studio One for working with video and composing to video. I hope that this has been helpful. And uh, it's kind of a bummer about the audio issue. But it, again, most of us who are doing this sort of work are going to be using a separate audio interface. So this should not pose a problem for you. And I think we will wrap up here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.